All right. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Business Insights with Matt Millia. And I'm extremely excited today because I have someone who has been absolutely ahead of the times in the real estate field, utilizing video, but also using fear and what most people are fearful of to propel and excel her business. And she's going to share a lot of that. But first, let me cue our intro here. Welcome to Business Insights with Matt Milia. I'm your host, Matt Milia. And in this podcast, we'll talk about the real, raw, uncut business success secrets you won't find anywhere else. Follow my journey from entry level to CEO. We discuss real actionable items you can plug into your business right away. To subscribe to our weekly top tips, you can go to www.mattpodcast.com and join our community of elite high-level performers. And if you're interested in our inside sales company, you can go to www.appointmentstoday.com to jump on a free strategy call. And now, stay tuned for our podcast. All right. Hey, Catherine, how are you? Hey, I'm good. How are you doing? I am great. I'm even better that I was able to get you to uh, share and uh, really tell everybody a little bit about you. And uh, and you really helped me with a lot of our video and just getting inspired and doing different things. So I'd love for you to kind of just give a little bit of your backstory and uh, you know tell a little bit about yourself and how you got into real estate. Okay, well, real estate um, happened later, but um, my story started actually, so I am from Toronto, Canada, and uh, around age 22, I decided that I was going to move to Europe. So that's what I did. I moved to Europe by myself to a Mediterranean island, and uh, I got a job teaching there. So I taught there for 18 years. While I was there, I got my master's degree from England, and um, I had three jobs when I worked there. I was working mornings, afternoons, and doing private English lessons at the same time. And uh, at the age of 33, so about 12 years ago, I was going to bed one evening and um, got into bed. And all of a sudden, like the walls were closing in on me. I didn't know what was going on. And I called my husband and he rushed into the room. By the time he got to the room, I was up and my right arm had gone numb. So I had a sense that this was a heart attack. I couldn't believe, like, you know, it's, it's kind of strange because you're 33, you've got two small kids and you're like, but this can't be happening. So very quickly, he got me in the car. We lived in the countryside, so there was no ambulance who was coming to help me. Um, we got in the car, raced to the hospital, and uh, I remember being in that car on the drive, and I remember looking over at him, and I said, I'm going now. And he was like, no, no, you're not going anywhere. And I said, I can feel I'm going. So we got to the hospital in about eight minutes, and um, the only doctor on duty that night was the head cardiologist, and he was standing in the driveway getting a breath, breath of fresh air which was very odd. So we pull up right away. They get a gurney out They're pumping me full of drugs and everything. So they admit me, but I keep having heart attacks. So I had one every day for the next five, six days. Um, the surgeon came to me on, uh, I remember he came to me on a Friday evening, his eyes were watery. And he said, uh, you're not making it till Sunday if these heart attacks don't stop. So by the grace of God, Saturday morning, I didn't have any heart attacks. Saturday afternoon, I was fine. So they did an angiogram, said, uh, you've got four arteries blocked. You're going in for triple bypass tomorrow morning. So I had open heart surgery on the Monday. And um, that was about a two week uh, recuperation in the hospital, got home from the hospital. So, you know, from the time that I was post surgery, and just lying in that hospital room, I remember looking out the window. And I remember thinking, like, this, this can't be it, like, there's got to be more. You know, I'm only 33. I, I haven't even done half of what I needed to do. So that alone is what sort of got me going, and sort of, you know, getting out of the bed and okay, I need to get home. But of course, there's a fear, because you're 33, you've just had open heart surgery. 
So I left the hospital absolutely fearful, fearful of this was going to happen again because I didn't know why it had happened in the first place. So I'm home for about a week and I have a stroke. I go back into the hospital. They give me more medication <coughs> and then they send me home again. So now I'm really scared. And uh, I'm, I'm like making maps of, of, you know, if I have to take my kids somewhere, I'm like mapping where the closest hospital is in case I have a heart attack while I'm in the car. So my life was just, it was just fear. One after another, after another, every day I woke up wondering, is, is this the day I'm gonna die? Or is this the day I'm gonna have another heart attack? So it's a horrible way to, it's a horrible way to live to wake up in the morning and all you can think about is, is this the day I'm going to die? So this went on for a few months and I was watching an episode of Oprah. We got Oprah once a month in Cyprus on one channel. And she had this lady on who had been through a traumatic experience. And you know, this lady is complaining and why did this have to happen to me? And I remember watching and listening cause you kind of, you know, you, 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 um, you can, oh, I've just totally lost my words, but basically I could empathize with how that lady was feeling because I was sort of in that same position at the moment. And Oprah looked at her and said, why not you? What makes you more different than anybody else that you shouldn't go through something traumatic? And the idea behind it is you may not understand now while you're, why you've gone through this, but you will later on. So I kind of took that and I that was basically the point where I decided that I was not going to have a pity party for myself anymore. There was no point to keep asking why me. You know, I did my own research after that, but I also continued to live my life. So I decided that I was going to open my own business as well as teach. So I opened a 5000 square foot kids indoor playground where I catered parties and that I did for another, um, so at the same time, I'm a professor at the university and I've opened this children's play area and I'm teaching English privately. So I've still gone back to three jobs again, which you're not supposed to do once you've been through all of that. So my husband at some point just said, you know what, I think it's time to go to Canada. Um, you know, you're gonna go back home and we need to just try something different because obviously this way of living just isn't working for health wise. So that's what we did. We packed up. We didn't really have a lot and uh, started all over again 12 years ago. It's actually 12 years this summer that wow. we came back to Canada and started all over. I didn't know anyone because I had been gone for 18 years. So I had, you know, as they say in real estate, your sphere of influence. I had no sphere. I had an uncle and I had parents. That's it. We moved into a new town. And um, I taught for a little bit and then I decided that I wanted to try something different. So I uh, was watching television one evening. This amazing channel that I became addicted to, HGTV, which I had never heard of after living in Europe. And I found all these real estate shows that looked like real estate was really easy. So, you know, you show people three houses and they're gonna buy one. And I thought, well, that's pretty cool. So I started studying for my real estate license. And uh, I think being a professor, um, I didn't find it difficult, right? I, I was able to take it all in. It's normally here in Canada, it's about a year and a half to two year course, but I got it in eight months. And uh, I went around and I um, interviewed at brokerages. I chose uh, a big box brand brokerage. And she said to me, well, welcome aboard. What's your goal? And I said, my goal is to get rid of the carpet in my house and put hardwood. She's like, that's that's your goal. And I said, yep, that's it. You know, coming from from Cyprus, my 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 goals in Cyprus were survival. Like, how can I pay my bill? So I've moved to Canada with nothing. I still have the survival goal of I need to pay bills. For me, the the luxury would have been pulling out carpet and putting in hardwood because that would have been something over and above just paying bills and a mortgage. So that was my goal for year one, probably about a $30,000 goal. And uh, I know I'm talking a lot. You're not asking any questions, but no, no, it's all you. I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm entranced by your, by your story. So no, keep, so, keep going. 
So this first year, you know, there's there's not much mentorship and uh, I've got to figure out really quickly how I'm going to make sales because I've spent the, like the last $5,000 I had on my real estate course. So now I just have to make it work. And this is what I tell a lot of people when they get into real estate. Don't get in with a plan B. Go in and there's one plan and it's called plan A and I'm going to make it work. So that's what I did because that's what I know to do. I know that if you're going to go in, you're going to go all in and you're going to do whatever you need to do to yep. find business. So I didn't have any money. So therefore I was making calendars on Microsoft Word. And then I would, and I would, that was actually my handout when I went door knocking in the neighborhoods is I handed out this calendar of, oh, Valentine's Day is on this day. And I mean, it's ridiculous when I think back, but it's all I could afford. And I would bring my kids with me because I didn't have babysitting. But slowly I got my first I was um, one of the agents in the office allowed me to do his open house. So I got a couple of prospects because here is what I knew. Although I didn't have a lot of experience in real estate, I had taught communication. So I knew how to communicate with people. And, you know, I knew how to build a rapport and create a relationship with someone. So I took what the only strength that I thought I had at that time, which was that, and then I used that in my open houses. I genuinely wanted people to talk to. I had no friends. I had no sphere of influence. I just have an uncle and my parents. So, you know, for me, going out to open houses was almost like a social occasion for me. I'm actually going to meet people who I don't know. Right. So that turned into a listing and then buyers and then a listing. And I ended up being rookie of the year, my first year in real estate, and I made $100,000 my first year in real estate over 12 years ago. So which was a lot back then. And that's when I realized that, you know, although I was being told to cold call and do these things, I realized that we all have strengths. And because we're told that you need to prospect in a certain way, is it using your strength wisely? And, you know, I would sit in that office and I would cold call and I did whatever I was told to do. And I tell you, I, I hated it. I absolutely hated it. But put me in an open house in front of people. No problem whatsoever. So this is what I learned after year one was do what you know, do use your strengths to your advantage, because that is what will help propel you forward. So true. And that is. That is why we are, that's why we have an inside sales company, just because of the fact that so many people don't like the prospecting. They don't want to sit there and go through that. No. And the fact, the fact that you came through something so traumatic, you had those you know, multiple heart attacks, you were able to rebound, you, you change. And I kept laughing because you kept on saying, you had literally just your two family members and they can only buy so many houses. Well, they so, weren't buying any, so. <laughs> so, yeah, so you really had to rely on your ability to to get out there and basically make friends and influence people right. uh, and, yeah. and, just, and just get in front of as many people as you can. With all the challenges of today's marketplace, what are some things that you feel that, folks that are brand new in the real estate industry can take away from from your journey. So what I learned early on is that I am still doing today what I started doing 11, 12 years ago. Um, you know, we bring in the online aspect. We brought the online aspect in, let's say, six years ago uh, mm -hmm. on a, a wider range. But I've never stopped um, the emails. I've never stopped uh, two emails a month. I've never stopped sending snail mail. So I will still send a market update, let's say every quarter by mail to all of the contacts in my database. Because what I've learned is that we may have everything online, but people love getting a piece of mail in their mailbox. That is not a sure. bill. That is not junk mail. That isn't a coupon for pizza. You know, there's, if you offer something of value and you are consistent with it, you will be remembered. It's funny because, you know, about six, seven years into the business, I was finally called on someone who had been in my database and they had been receiving all my stuff for about six years. She had it all in a folder 
every letter I had sent, every notepad I had sent. And she said to me, she said, I've been watching you for six years and you've never stopped. And that's the key is that, you know, if you don't know anyone, you need to start with, if you have a sphere, then you start with your sphere. If you don't, then you start asking anyone and everyone about open houses. If there are no open houses such as now, then it's video. Oh, we may have lost you temporarily. Hopefully, uh, guys, what she's gonna share about video is an absolute game changer. And uh, I watch agents across so many marketplaces emulating some of the things that she's doing. So hopefully her internet comes back on here. I think we lost her intermittently. But uh, some of the things that she has that she's growing her business with are low cost. It doesn't take a ton. There you go. I, I was I was talking through as you were uh, I, as you were transitioning through video. Go ahead. That I, damn I, I, countryside internet. <laughs> That's all right. I well, you know, where you, I you have to, you have to choose, right? You either live in a beautiful place and have two acres and crappy internet, or you live in the city and have little space, but you've got good internet. Yeah, <laughs> I, I I got the last thing that I got was uh, you were talking about leveraging video, and then I, yes. I was like, oh, you because that's of course. <laughs> I mean, I'm like, oh, that 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 Depends. that's the that's Depends. the golden nugget, and then all of a sudden it's like, yes. off went the internet. Go ahead. Yep. So. So what I'll say is up until, because I started using video, so I hired a coach uh, who we both know, John Cheplak, and I hired him, it's almost six years ago. And, you know, video was really in its infancy on Facebook and for real estate agents. There were very few real estate agents actually using video as a tool rather than just sort of for fun, but actually as a marketing tool. So. You know, he said to me, you need to, I think you should start using video because I had reached this plateau, let's say, where I was mm -hmm. doing very well. I was making at that point about 250,000 every year continuously, which is great. But I'm yeah. that person where I need to keep leveling it up every year. I need to see some growth. It's how I've right. always been. So when you make the same amount every year for three years, I've obviously reached the range of what I'm capable of, not capable, but my, my knowledge had reached a certain range. Um, and so what I've, what I've learned over the years is that if you are capping out at a certain amount and you can't figure out how to move past that, you need to find someone who can help you move past that. And they and they have to be able to show you that they, they've done this before with other people. So that's what I did. He said, you've got to do video. Here are four kinds of videos that you need to do. And I said, well, how do I do it? He's like, no, no, you've got to figure that out. I'm just telling you the what you need to do because this is what will happen if you do. And it was, you know, the, um, parasocial behavior because people will get to know who you are and they'll like you, they'll trust you. So I took all of that and I said, okay, I've been through so much crap in my years of life. I've now been given a second chance at life. Am I really going to just not do video because I'm not comfortable with the way that I look or the way that I sound or because I don't know what I'm doing? So I decided that my goal was f worth far more than the fear that I felt inside. I, I so desperately wanted to do better than what I was doing that I said, I don't care. I'm in this and I promised and I committed that I would do video for a year. And I said, after a year, I'm sure it won't work, but I'm gonna do it for a year. So that's what I did. I went all in and five years ago, I did my first market update. So I post the market update in January. I do it. It's minus 18 outside. It was freezing cold. Um, but I got up enough nerve to do it. I had a little sticky note on my hand with all the numbers in the neighborhood. And I just gave the most boring market update on video on a tripod with my phone. And I did it. A week later, I get a phone call because I promoted it to Facebook for $50. 
I get a phone call. Hey, I saw your video. I've never seen anyone do that before on Facebook. Can you come over and give a price for my house? So I listed the first four bedroom home of the year um, in the area where I am. I'm 20 minutes north of Toronto. It was a beautiful home. So now I've got to move on to video number two, which is an open house video. So then I did my first open house video. I had probably over 30 people in that open house straight from the video, which at that time in January in minus 20 is a hard thing to do. Oh yeah. From that open house, I got eight prospects. Of those eight prospects, seven of them bought and sold with me over the next six months. So just from those two videos, I made $100,000. And I Amazing. spent $98 promoting them on Facebook. So I'm starting to think to myself, hmm, this video thing is it's working. Because what I, I deliberately did is I, I like to do social experiments. Um, maybe it's the teacher in me, maybe it's the educator. So I decided at the end of my open house video, I said, if you've watched if, if, you're, if you're coming to the open house after watching this video, ask me for your treat at the open house. They would get to the front door and they'd be like, I'm here, where's the treat? So I actually had little gifts and I had hot chocolate and I had donuts. So that's how I knew it worked because I knew it came directly from the video that I did. I love so it. from there, um, I then introduced the third kind of video, which are business spotlights. So mm -hmm. when the weather became a little bit better around March, I started doing business spotlights and I did them weekly, which became a little bit much when you're busy. So then it became bi-weekly and then monthly. But that's where everything in the community started to change because the community would be watching my videos because they would be interested in I didn't know that the lady who owned the fry truck used to be a CEO on, on, you know, basically the equivalent of wall street in Toronto. So it was interesting because I was getting the stories behind the people who owned the businesses. It wasn't just, Hey, here's a bakery. They've got great croissants. I wanted to know what made you open this business. Tell me what you love about it. You know, the lady who had the fry truck was poutine. Where do you get the idea to have a poutine truck? which is French fries with gravy and cheese curds on top. It's this French Canadian um, thing that we've got. It's so good. <laughs> but, you know, my thing was, how did you go from CEO on a Wall Street area to owning a food truck? You know, it, it's such a, so fascinating to me. So this is what I would do every time I interviewed these businesses. And a lot of people would tune in after a while. And those became very popular. So here's what video does. Video starts to snowball because from listing, you do an open house. And so people get to see you as a real estate agent. From there, you then have to show them, you got to take the real estate hat off and now you're going to put on, I'm a person and I live in a community that I love. So now I'm going to spotlight the businesses that I love visiting every day. So now they get to see you as another kind of person, but they still know you're that agent, but you're this person who's now giving back to the community. So then what happened is I woke up one morning and I look and I see a, a Twitter repost of my video and it's the mayor of the area I live in. And he said, thank you so much, Catherine, for highlighting businesses in our town. So from that, then okay. I have the actual town the municipality calls me and one of the counselors says you have more people watching your videos than ours so would you come and do a video of the opening of one of our new council buildings so then it starts again spiraling because now i've got council members watching my videos because now i'm promoting their events so then the election comes along and um, I get two private messages from opposing members on council who have people helping them. The one lady asked if I would consider running as a council member. And the other one asked if I would help her to run as mayor. And I was like, what is going on here? But this is what happens. This is what I, 
This is the beauty of sticking with video is that you get a lot of comments. You know, you have a lot of criticism. I would get DMs saying, you don't know what you're doing. You're not very good on video. I would get all of those. But if you give up because you receive those messages, then you never get to see what happens when you move from A to B. And now all of a sudden you walk into a store and people know who you are because they've been watching your videos over and over and over. So this is what I teach my agents and my coaching clients as well, is I know that you're going to be fearful doing video. I know it's uncomfortable. I know most people don't like how they look and how they sound. But if you stick with it, that, that special zone that exists after your comfort zone, that's the beauty. And that's where it all happens, in that zone. The one thing that you've said that resonated with me the most, and this was actually outside of our uh, of our podcast, but you had said you were when you when you were presenting at the mastermind, you had this. Uh, it was almost a celebrity type of uh, feeling when you walked into a certain house. Would you mind sharing that? Because I feel like that was probably yeah. one of the most, like, I thought that was awesome. So so what's interesting is people start following you. So once they start watching your videos, they will start following your page. Once they follow your page and they see that you obviously have a personal page, then they start following that. So I get a call from a lady who says, you know, will you come and, and give us a, a price for our home? Sure, I'd be happy to. So I'm still me. I'm a real estate agent and this is what I do. I'm not thinking I'm anything over and above any of this. So I arrive at the home, she answers the door and she stops and she's got her phone in her hand and she's like, would you mind if we take a selfie? Because I can't believe you're in my house. <laughs> and I was like, sure, okay. So from there, I walk into the kitchen and she has everything I've ever posted that I like on the table. She's got croissants. She's got donuts. She's got fruit. She's got all these things. And then she says to me, I know from one of your posts that you don't drink coffee. So I have tea and sparkling water for you. I was like, I'm here to give you a price for your home. And you've just laid out your table in a buffet style. And, you know, it was it was a wonderful experience. And what What's interesting is since that one listing that I went on for her, she decided not to sell her house, but has referred me to three other people who have sold their houses all within the same neighborhood as hers. So this is the other thing that I always tell people is that don't think that because you walk into one person's house, that that's the person who you're trying to impress. Just be authentic, be kind listen to people because they remember it and they will refer you even if they don't use you. So, so, so true. Yeah. It's, um, it's a wonderful industry. It is, you know, there's, we hear a lot of negativity, but if you tune out the negativity and concentrate on how you are as a person with people, that's what will change your business. It's not the kind of leads. It's not, even the listing presentation, you know, people are like, oh, do you go with a, a large listing presentation? And I say, no, I go with two pieces of paper and, and that's it. And otherwise I talk, I'll show some videos on my phone, but that's it. And that's what people want to know, that you're there listening to them. And you've already built up this authority. And I think that's where a lot of times we forget because we don't want to push ourselves outside of the comfort zone. Yeah. I mean, hell, you were one of the motivators for this, which you don't even know that, but you I were don't. literally, I have a very small group of people that I looked at, I go, you know, I go, they're really doing the right things here. I want to model what they're doing using video. And I don't even think you know how many offices across like the greater, like the Northeast Ohio area they've seen your presentation they've seen the actual where you go through and you say hey this is how much the houses are for are selling for in this area because you're 
you're positioning yourself as one as an authority figure and you're also leveraging yourself as not just you're, you're not just branding yourself but you're also putting yourself out there as I am the expert in this field I have the authority and I'm likable I'm a real person I'm just like you and, and I'll, I'll, I'm going to interrupt you there because actually this is what people have told me when I walk into their homes is they say to me, you are exactly like you are on your videos. And Shoot. that was always my goal. My goal was always, you know, some of the negative comments that I would receive uh, the first few, I'd say about the first six months I started doing video is I had people say, you're very, they would send me messages. You're egotistical. You just want everyone to see you. You, you're this, you, you, you. And you know, you can take it very, very personally, especially when you're not confident to begin with in doing the video because it's new and you don't really know what you're doing. And five years ago, there was really no one to show me what to do like there is now. So I just kept doing it and I just kept doing it. I just said, no, I'm just going to be who I am. Uh, there's nothing else I can do. And eventually people are going to see it's not a facade. It really is who I am. So for me, I think that is one of the biggest compliments I get is not, oh, I love your video, but it's you're exactly like you are in your video, which means you really understand who I am and you've understood my personality, which is why you've chosen to call me because that's the beauty of video. They get to choose you before they choose you. You know, they get to experience you before you even walk in their door. And that's the whole point. And, and that has been, so many people have gotten listings just from the, the way that you have that laid out, the way that you have the video. And being, yeah, being yourself, of course, it's mm -hmm. something that so many of us, Stephanie, my wife used to poke fun at me because I would have, I would get this weird uh, broadcaster voice when I would go on video and she's like, why do you do that? Like, just talk the way you normally talk. Right. And it, yeah. but it's, it's one of those things where it takes, it takes time to yeah. break these little habits. And then trolls are, we see them all the time now. I have a client that we run ads for and literally he'll he'll send us messages or he'll he'll start battling with them on there. I said, listen, you don't want the image of your organization to be the battling of the troll on there because that person has no clue what you're doing. Most of the time, they're just projecting whatever is going on in their life or they're just bored and they just want to argue with people. So they're yeah. just putting comments out there that are, you know, they're trying to get a rise out of people. So yeah, it's yeah. You, you definitely can't let them fuel you. Uh, no. That's no. And I'm glad you brought that up. Uh, for everyone that's on, uh, guys, if you want help with with any of your your marketing presentations, video, how you present yourself, um, Catherine is definitely the expert on it. You can go to her website. It's CatherineLucatoCoaching.com. And um, Catherine, for everyone that's watching, what would be in for you a great closing, uh, just to kind of sum everything up, what are some things that, that you feel like right now is needed so much in the industry and just needed to be put out there that can really make a difference in, in people's business? I think right now it's concentrating on building relationships with people. And because we have less face-to-face -face interaction right now, at least I know we do, um, you know, we're, we're trying to do much more virtually your best, um, your best bet right now is to start video, get people to see who you are, even if it's one minute. And this is how I start my agents off. And I say to them, go to a point in your town or your area that is popular, go to a park that maybe that has a big clock, whatever it is, stand there and just Talk about the park. Hey, everyone, this is where I am. If you're looking for a place to walk and get out and get some fresh air, this is a really great place, whatever the case is. Go to a business, stand outside the business. You don't even have to do what I did and walk inside and actually interview someone. You could just stand outside saying, are you looking for a fantastic place for an ice cream cone for you and the kids? Right here. They have the best ice cream and they're super nice. It's one minute. 
But here's what happens is that people start to get to know you, like you, trust you, and then they're going to call you. These days, people are very skeptical on what they see online. You know, we get so many emails, we get so much spam. So if you can just be yourself, but you've got to start video one minute at a time and then work up to a market update. But, you know, having someone like I did where I went to a mentor or coach who can set you on the right path. And now that I've been doing it for five years, I can actually give them the dialogue in how to, to set it out. It works. I know because I give it to my coaching clients. I have one lady who's only started doing video when she started coaching with me. Last month, she was number one in her office. It's Amazing. not a coincidence. You know, no. it, these things are not coincidental. It's not a coincidence that from six years ago until now that I own a real estate brokerage, my business is better now in all the other things that I do than it was even five years ago because I've built a following. And so they get to know me. And now when I go to a listing, I actually am not interviewing for it. They, they will message me and say, can you come and bring paperwork? We'd like to list with you today. I mean, I that. that makes life much easier. It does. It does. Because you're lowering that resistance before you even have to walk in the door. So you're not arguing over price or commission or whatever the case may yeah. be because you've already presented the value. Yeah, they got to experience you before they experienced you. I love it. Well, for everyone, again, that's on here, Catherine is a wealth of knowledge. You can go to her website. Catherine, thank you so much for so jumping much, on. You, I mean, we, we could have talked for at least another hour with just dropping value on videos, but I know you got a busy day ahead of you, so I certainly won't hold you in. But I'm very thankful that you came on. And uh, guys, for everyone that's tuning in, same channel, same place next week. And uh, Catherine, appreciate you. And uh, thank you. we'll see you. See you soon. Yeah. See you soon. Thank you. Thank you.